Welcome back, everyone. I'm the Diversior, and this is Lancaster Mobile Apex Season 12. Um, by the time you guys see this, I guess uh, happy December Ween. Uh, not much to report as usual. Um, both uh, Lightbringer and Christian are almost maxed out on their casting uh, patterns. Uh, I think Chris uh, Lightbringer only needs one more rank of um, cloth helmet. And Christian needs uh, two more ranks of accessory, and I think one more rank of heavy armor, and then they'll be completely maxed out as tanks, which is good. Um, as for our opponent, uh, we got uh, Hood Maestro, which honestly looks like a familiar name. I feel I feel like I've fought against him like at least in World, World Arena, but I couldn't find any um, past logs uh, in, uh, with his name. But in any case. Um, Pretty standard tank push box, it feels like. Um, only three healers, which I definitely could have taken advantage of, maybe. Um, but not a big deal. Uh, we haven't seen Himiko in forever. Um, I hate this character with a passion, since I'm very very much single target um, as a playstyle. Um, everything else is nothing new, per se. Uh, there are a few faces we haven't seen too often, but been seeing a bit more recently like landy is here and then of course there's kruger uh kaira hasn't been around uh as an opponent for quite some time so kind of a variety um yeah honestly it's a mix it's mostly um it seems to be mostly just single target aoe pushing um the only person that can really assassinate is kaira and himiko and himiko you usually just use her for um aoe um, so my opponent banned uh, Sheree right off, right off the bat. Um, not not really sure the purpose of it, besides just, just the fact that she's long legs and dub can double act. So I get rid of Fumiko immediately because I didn't want to deal with that. Um, went ahead and grabbed Lightbringer. I felt like Lightbringer gives me a little bit more flexibility, even though she's still only 5 stars. Because um, the only character that is not holy is um, uh, Kagura. And uh, she is uh, she's uh, she can actually buff her own attack, so def uh, she'll she'll lack defensive stats, uh, buffs, and stuff like that. But but besides that, I wasn't really that worried about it. Uh, my opponent went ahead and banned uh, Rosalia and um, Adan Kelmo. I'm guessing they're just going after anything that has decent uh, legs or teleportation. Uh, goes for Landius. Uh, this one's actually a Spear Landius. Uh, we had got rid of Kruger and Lucretia because they are honestly more annoying than anything. Um, uh, Lucretia, of course, is just a really strong powerhouse when it comes to single target damage. Also, she can AoE. And as I've mentioned before, I do not like Kruger's mat uh, infinite range uh, buff that debuffs everyone around them. Um, so I always try to get rid of that. I'm also trying to make sure I. I'm also assuming my opponent, if they're going to ban healers, they're going to ban the ones that can deal with debuffs. So I might as well get rid of some of their debuffers along the way. So I went ahead and grabbed Lucretia, which is actually a decent second pick. Uh, second pick. Uh, they went ahead and banned my Liana and took out my uh, Kagura at that point. Took Iron Blood Commander. Alright, so you got... Um, Burn I went ahead and got rid of Bernhardt and Kyura. Honestly, I was kind of torn on the options. Uh, Shafaniel can definitely be kind of dangerous with the dispels and just massive amounts of AoE damage. Um, of course, there's always Bozal with his 5 debuffs. Um, and then, of course, Gwedem and then um, Helena here. They're all just really annoying. But uh, Kyra can bypass Guard, which isn't the biggest deal since most of my stuff is pretty decent as far as magic defense is concerned. Um, and then Bernhardt, of course, is just really annoying, uh, simply because his AoE does a, and fixed damage does a, quite a bit, and he can uh, potentially debuff everybody with um, heal negation. So I went ahead and grabbed Shafaniel, uh, mainly just to kind of prepare for Wedem, which Wedem didn't, did get picked. Um, at this point, uh, my opponent did get rid of Rosen, uh, Seal and got rid of um, Yulia, so I'm down to two healers at this point. And as, as, as I predicted, um, they got rid of the, pretty much the two primary people that can counteract debuffs. Uh, so at this point I was like, all right, you get no Bozal and no Shafaniel. And went ahead and grabbed uh, uh, my Sophia. So I was half expecting them to just ban my, caster, my casters and just leave me with an extra tank and extra healer, but that's not what they went with. Um, they got rid of my act again, essentially, and got rid of my potential AoE. 
So they actually left me with Ashamir. Um, not exactly sure why. I could have also gone double tank, but against my opponent, that could potentially do some. I mean, honestly, it wouldn't be that bad, but honestly, I wanted more offense. So they grab Helena. So at this point, I. I, they had three healers left, so I went ahead and just banned two of the two worst ones and uh, left them with Sophia and another tank and grabbed Ashamir. And there you go. So the thing I had to take a bit of time on was figuring out what troops to bring for um, Lightbringer. Um, the biggest issue, of course, is like, okay, I, I knew Wedem's going to probably go steal main were werewolves. Um, but, you know, you have cavalry, and then you have infantry, and then I didn't really assume anything for Landius, but yeah, it, they had a decent mix of different class types, so kind of no matter what I picked, I was going to kind of get screwed. Um, so I, at that point, I was like, I may as well just grab something that gives me a decent amount of physical damage reduction. Uh, that's not going to help me against Ironblood, um, but it at least pr help me protect against uh, Wedem and Helena. Now what actually surprised me um, was Helena actually went with Highland Warriors as the troop type. Um, which I didn't... It's not even something I even consider because you usually don't take a 3 move troop um, when you have a 5 move unit. But that's what, the, what they went with. Um, Landius also went with infantry. I don't know if there was any particular reason for this. I'm assuming it was just try to counter pick Lightbringer because this thing... Guardian infantry are not good against magic, so I don't know what the purpose was for that. Um, Iron Blood going with Sansi Mercenaries was a safe pick. Um, Lightbringer, I don't think really has any cavalry options. They might have a, they might have Templar Knights, but that's about it. Um, and then of course we got Wedem. Wedem has Crush, which is actually something I didn't even consider. Yeah, with. Um, if he has crush, he, he doesn't actually has his, he doesn't have his teleport, which means uh, all he really has for a move again is his three uh, C. So that was something I didn't really consider. Uh, Sophie went fighting monks. I'm guessing just for better defense. Uh, Landius standard kit. Uh, Helena standard kit. Yeah, three C chivalry and pedal storm is the common thing. And then Iron Blood went full offense. Uh, Iron Blood, I believe, is uh, Yilis. Um, so this actually works for her. Over here, um, I actually opted to replace Reaper with Heaven's Sanction, just to kind of give a little bit more AoE pressure. Um, Ashamara doesn't actually have much in the, in the form of AoE. She has uh, Frost Dragon Breath, and then she has... Um, was it Cleanse? No, not Cleanse. I can't remember the name. Um, it's essentially just the, uh, the small AoE that can dispel uh, a buff. So I just opted with her usual kit. Um, Sophia, nothing special here. Full heals with 3C and Rewind. Lightbringer, standard kit with Phalanxes, and then Shafaniel, all AoEs with Shrine Maidens. Alright. So with that, I was like, okay, you can only move 3. That's interesting. So I just moved up, and right off the bat, uh, Iron Blood goes with uh, Heavy Strike, which actually works. Um, that actually makes it so uh, Helena has 5 movement again. So she's high, she's a 5 movement cavalry with infantry troops, which is kind of neat. It's pretty creative. Personally, I think it would have been better to go with Angels for Helena, because Helena in, in her special terrain with Angels just doesn't get hurt by magic that much. So I'm kind of just inching forward a little bit. Seeing what my opponent does. Oh, there's a Breeze proc. Because everyone uses Breeze. Yeah. So I noticed... I, I'm guessing this was a bait. But... Um, yeah, he actually got Magic Defense Plus from a, uh, a Tenya buff, I think. But in any case... Um, uh, Lanius, when his did faction buff, he did not do peace of mind, so his guard range is only one. So Wedem's actually outside of range, but uh, Wedem does have magic defense up. Um, she also he also takes uh, reduced range damage, and he's in forest. 
Uh, but I do have holy uh, holy class units, so I was hoping that I can maybe punch through by them and kill them early. But I think this was actually a bait. Yeah, you should even bother buffing him. So yeah, I moved in. I was like, okay, we'll just attack from range. CR3 C. And yeah, I, I didn't do enough damage. Uh, I was like, oh well, this, this match just got a lot harder. So I thought they were going to just kill Ashamir because that was a safe pick. But instead went straight for um, Lightbringer. So I tanked it. It's all physical, so I do have damage reduction. Uh, it does throw a bunch of debuffs thanks to the terrain here. Um, does hit some um, uh, Lucretia for some decent damage, but I was like, well, I mean, I could just, I can kind of just shuffle forward. Um, the only person that can potentially kill uh, Lucretia from full HP to nothing is Helena, and since Helena has now acted, I was like, all right, I'll just go and finish off Wedem, and then heal up a little bit. So I was like, okay, obviously. Iron Blood's gonna move in. Can't kill it. Uh, won't be able to kill. Um, um, Lucretia, but can definitely kill uh, Ashamir here. She did take a little bit of fixed damage, but of course it didn't really matter. She had first strike and all that good stuff. So at this point, I was like, all right, we'll just go ahead and move in, start doing some. Uh, this is both j to do damage, but also to start debuffing and throwing out silences. Uh, so with that, I'm able to just kind of start purging buffs. And the only faction buffer um, is Landius. Um, so I'm just poking away at Helena, but with her exclusive armor, she's kind of just self-healing it. But I'm also healing myself a little bit as well, so it kind of works out. So, Radiant Glow. So right now it's 4 on 4, not counting the puppet. Uh, the big thing that's kind of just a really annoyance is the terrain here. It's just constantly putting debuffs on me. So at this point, Helena did attack. It's a regular attack, it critted, but it's not enough to kill. And even with little AoE damage. Uh, he does have um, a sword that does uh, fixed damage, but that alone is not going to be enough. If it was 3C, he, um, she could have actually killed um, Lucretia and then used the AoEs just to kill the uh, the second life. So yeah, I was like, alright, well, you have no buffs, so I'll just go in and wreck you. Actually, let's... Sorry, I was talking through some of that. Yeah, 50% HP, no magic defense, no magic defense, and I think I was using Free Strike. No, I was using Impure Shockwave. Okay, so yeah, I just went all in on this. Oh yeah, that's right, because of Rewind. So yeah, I pretty much just guaranteed that she was going to die. Um, the biggest concern I had, of course, was the, the reduced damage she takes when she's in her own terrain. So I just really wanted to ensure she died, because that terrain is just going to keep wearing us down. And we really need our defenses as high as possible to survive hits from uh, Iron Blood there. Since it's infantry versus uh, spears, and she has magic damage. So again... Uh, thanks to the rewind, I'm able to do another hit of 3C, dispel more of their buffs. Uh, doing that did actually dispel their guard buff, uh, so he only has a uh, one range guard now. Even without the faction buff, of course, Sophia can use her exclusive to kind of buff people up a bit, which is fine. So, went ahead and used his opportunity to reapply um, faction buffs since it got refreshed with rewind. I know I'm standing in terrain, which is annoying, but all I really had to worry about was Commander's Ferocity, which almost kills me, but since it didn't, I'm kind of good to go until the next rewind comes. Yeah, so her rewind's back up. Cause I, think, I think it's because she hit herself with it. In any case, um... So yeah, uh, right now Iron Blood doesn't have any active skills. Landius is currently guarding no one. Um, also, his stuff is all on cooldown, and Sophia is good to go, but that's it. 
So, really the key thing here was the Iron Blood Commander. So, Radiant Glow, she's now in guard range. So, I went and did Heaven Sanction first, just to dispel some buffs. Um, I could have attacked with Lucretia, but I went and just dealt with buffs first to see what um, Landis did. Because Landis could only guard one person, so one way or the other I was going to be able to get kill, uh, at least a hit off. And it looks like it was enough to get kill. And at this point I was just like, alright, well, might as well get rid of all the debuffs. Because uh, the train's going to be going away soon. So, action buff. There's the heal. So, did Divine Judgment again. I think one of those three C's was actually uh, her two cost, but I lost track. But yeah. Um, you actually got to see Ashimir attack for once. Unfortunately, it was a failed attack, but uh, my opponent decided to get really fancy. Um, I don't really... I don't know what the plan was. Um, there was absolutely no way Helena was going to get killed against Lucretia with just AoEs. Like, even if she did succeed, she would self-res. Um, what makes Helena dangerous against Lucretia is if she, if uh, is if Lucretia is not being guarded, you can essentially three C her, which will kill or uh, take her first life, and then the AOE follow ups would finish her um, her second life off. So even with the puppet, she wouldn't be able to survive. But what I expected was, you know, running in with maybe. Wedem, like if like throwing out Wedem's sword or something like that to get a bunch of damage reduction and then go and get go for kill for, with Wedem, or at the very least, I mean, you can still go for a trade, but just go with um, go with Helena going for the kill instead. I guess I don't know that like it just didn't look feel like they they picked a good option for that. Um, not only well, actually going with kill with um, Helena. Um, first, instead of trying, uh, instead of going straight for Lucretia, would have made uh, Wedem's talent proc, which would have dispelled some of my buffs and make it so I can't use. I think it dispel disables passives and makes it so they can't be guarded. Uh, then Wedem could have followed up with his stuff and killed somebody else. Um, so that would have actually been really dangerous. But my opponent got a little fancy with it, and it ended up costing him. Because at that point, I could once I was able to survive a hit from um, Iron Blood, there was no way they would actually you know, to win the fight. Uh, so I believe I'm on a winning streak. Yeah, I, I, that's a four-win winning streak. I got around twenty. I think I got twenty-two points for it, uh, which means I would need to do like five, four more wins in a row to actually uh, go to gold two. That's the main reason why I haven't really tried to go higher. It's just it takes so long. And losing makes it take even longer because not only does it reduce your point total, but it pretty much kills your streak, which means you only get, I think, like 15 points per win, which just makes the process even longer. But in any case, i um, been having fun with this. Um, I didn't really talk about the events recently. Um, there's the, um, the fourth anniversary challenge, which you definitely should be doing if, you're, if you are not already. Uh, in fact, if you hadn't been doing it, you might, you probably, it's probably too late for you, unfortunately, because you need at least seven days to do a, a number of these. Uh, the only thing that was annoying about it is uh, it did have one that requires you to spend crystals, uh, the refresh stamina, and then there was one that actually forces you to do joint battles, which I don't do, but I did them for the event. Doing all of them gets you 20 uh, vouchers, which is just amazing. Um, is, oh uh, yeah. This has been out for a while, Magic Tower Conquest. I haven't even qu clicked on it. I, I hate I hate the chess game, um, especially now that the meta is to the point that to the point where it's at. It's just it's not fun for me to play, and it takes way too long to actually get rewards from it. So I don't bother with it. Uh, besides that, not much else to talk about. Um, the upcoming Thursday uh, is going to be the major uh, the anniversary update for our language so we're gonna get um, Sword of Light and Shadow, uh, gir uh, Girl in the Shell, 
I think SP Matthew will start will get his first phase coming out. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. There's I think there's also gonna be new troops as well. Um, so there's there's gonna be a lot to play around with. Um, I definitely look forward to it. So um, until then, I am the Depressed Eater. This was Langshire Mobile Apex Season 12. I'll see you guys next time.